Hey everyone, welcome back to CyberHack. Today, we're going to be going over a few things in regards to employment in the cybersecurity slash IT, because you know why? They group us all together as one. So it's really hard to differentiate between what's IT and what's specific to cybersecurity, because I think there's a lot of roles that overlap each other, whether you're a cloud admin, DLP, uh, EDR, SIM, any one of those administrators as a blue team or even on a red team, you're going to be categorized as an IT person. So in regards to that, let's jump right into it. Now, this is currently on LinkedIn. We're looking at entry level jobs. And of course, in the past, I have said that a lot of these salaries that are posted here are just straight up lying to you. As you're reading into further into the description, most of the times they'll tell you, well, actually I would take that back. Sometimes they will tell you like, yeah, this range we put there, it's not realistic. We're really going to only pay up to this amount. So, and it's sometimes it's like in between what's listed here. So let's just take this one, for example, this cyber claim console, uh, and it's going for 120 to 150,000. As you can see, I've selected entry level, and this is nowhere near entry level pay. And I, I don't know why every organization does this. Like they just don't take the time to put into entry level. I don't know. But knowledge and experience, you need one to four year experience with insurance coverage and litigation. That's just in that industry. You don't even have the X amount of years that they're requesting for you to be certified or if they even request the certification. Now here on this particular post, I do not see that. So let's go over some of the details as to what they're going to say here. So this is the part where I'm saying like sometimes they'll just tell you straight out, but they're going to be estimating. So our estimated base pay range for this role is between 120 to $150,000 a year. Base salary is determined by a variety of factors, including but not limited to market data, location, inter, uh, internal equitable, equability, domain knowledge, experience, and skills. In general, if the position sparks your interest, we encourage you to apply our team prioritized talent. So in short, what that actually means to me is that by the time you sit through all these interviews and you're thinking you're going to be making between 100 and 150 thousand dollars i'm pretty sure you're going to be making it on the lower end of that range unless unless they really really like you so as we keep on going we still see a, a ton of highest paying salary jobs but mind you these are not entry level because there's no way an entry level will have any one of these certifications because there's a minimum amount of years of requirement in order for you to even get to this point so what if we didn't select entry level and we selected director or mid to senior level? Forget the executive because I don't even want to look at that. So there's more job openings and all of a sudden the salary is like equal or even less than what entry level was because they just want to entice you to apply and apply and apply. There's going to be a whole bunch of things here and this is hybrid. You can look for full remote jobs, but let's go over some of the statistics of what's going on right now. Now, this is just a hot map of what's currently happening. You can do it by states. You can do it kind of drill it down more and you go into like the metro area so let's just say new york new jersey mpa there's 21,000, almost 22,000 jobs available within the cybersecurity realm or department or you want to call it industry now with that being said it could be a whole flux of different positions red team blue team admin firewall all this nonsense that everyone just categorizes everything and just puts it under cyber you know what uh, we need a firewall admin. I just put it under cyber. It used to be a point where firewall admin, oh, that's a, like a network engineer, right? He needs to know routing, subnetting, and switches, configurations, have a CCNA or even a CCIE. And on top of all that, knows how to configure a firewall. But no, that time has changed and now it's under cybersecurity. Lo and behold, it grows the department of the cybersecurity team even more now, but even Cisco themselves are getting into that bandwagon, which they already have. The whole CCNA has practically became a uh, CCNA, like uh, certified cyber Cisco, you know, associate or whatever it was. Um, and I, I had it many years ago and it had nothing to do with security, no mentions of it. The only thing that they probably even was related to security for a CCNA was like how to log in and make sure your password is secure, right? So uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But right now the certification holders, they're, they're getting saturated guys it's growing it's not going to go away these certifications expire but at the same time a lot of these vendors are reluctant to really remove you so like i said the amount of certifications and individuals holding these certifications is getting really saturated because the vendors who are hosting these exams and these certifications are reluctant to ever ever expire you because they want you to continuously play into their membership how do i know this because i let my certification lapse many times over 
with the membership fees. I didn't pay it for like years, years, my guys. So what happened? They said, oh, they keep on emailing me and say, well, you know, your certification is going to expire if you don't pay your membership dues, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I'm like, okay, I don't really care for this certification. So I'll let it lapse. Right. Let it, let it go into the deep hole and I will never pay it and never choose to pay it again. And it just keeps on coming back every time. They'll just be like, hey, your certification is on hold. Uh, I know everyone goes through a tough situation or, you know, financial. We're willing to let you re-enroll with this membership as long as you pay, blah, blah, blah. And no discount, mind you. It's just going to be the regular same fee that they charge every year to every other person. So I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. So that's how I know that they're out there, you know, just to capitalize on that. It's not, I mean, it's great to have these certifications to walk through the door, get through HR, say, hey, I have my Security Plus, I have my CISSP, I have, you know, everything else that's listed here, right? And many more, many, many more. Like OSCP over here is not even listed. Uh, C-Risk is not even listed for MySaka, but they, they do have CISA and the CSIM. So it's like, you know, where, where do you stop? Where do you start? What certification should you get? Basic knowledge. It really depends on what roles you're trying to fill. But let me just get into this really quickly. There is a true up, like a tech layoff tracker. Insane, isn't it? So right now, even though you see jobs listed on LinkedIn, Indeed, or any other job forum or, you know, social media platform that has job listings, it's a really interesting market right now because it's not like you can tell if these postings are fake or not, meaning our company is just putting it there and, and you know, it's hiring internally or they really need people, but they don't even have enough people to go through the whole hiring process. I know this because I have seen where HR departments get, you know, turn around, meaning either people leave or people like get let go. So it's really interesting how all this plays out because now companies that over hired in the past, which was maybe a year ago, two years ago, and we know this because it's all over the news, like, oh, Amazon, Google hired over 10,000 people within one year back in 2020. And now, like everyone's just like, all right, I think we have too much now. So we got to let some go. So let's look over here. SAP, 8,000 people impacted. Um, all these different companies. Look at this. You got PayPal that let go 2,500 people. And for the most part, these are like tech, financial, cyber related, IT related positions because these are tech positions. This is, this is not just accountants. I, I mean, maybe, maybe they, they had a, a different monitoring of tracker for those non-IT positions. I'm pretty sure there is, right? Accountants, HR, office managers, whatever, because there was a lot of, you know, telecommuting. A lot of people were working from home. Like, why would you need to pay, you know, a six figure to an office manager? Who, who or what is this person managing at this point, right? We don't even have a physical office that we're going to anymore or not often enough, right? So a lot, a lot of things play into a factor of why these positions are, are happening or you know, letting go people and, and rehiring at a lower rate, right? So we, we see a lot of companies here. I mean, even Microsoft, almost uh, 1,900 people impacted Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox employees. And it just, the list just keeps on going. And this was just January 2024, right? January 2024. We're not done yet, guys, because in February, there was a significant amount also. It's not a small number. You don't see these numbers dipping. Now, March is debatable because March hasn't ended yet. So by the time March ends and all that information gets updated to the website, you would probably see this number fluctuate a little higher as well. So where did we draw the line? Where does it end? Where does it stop? And how can you combat all this? Well, it is tough. No matter how many certifications, how many diplomas, how many master degrees you have in cybersecurity, you have to stay on top of all this stuff, right? You have to know more now than just being specialized in one particular thing. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you decided to start studying for, let's just say, the Security Plus, you have to build a niche on top of that now. Like, are you going to be a cybersecurity in AWS? Are you going to know some of that? Are you going to know some of the applications that are in the real world, whether it's like CrowdStrike or QRadar or Splunk or all these other big popular vendor names that you, you have to get yourself familiarized with, right? Are you going to spend a lot of your time trying to jump on Azure uh, training, which is most of the, most of them are pretty... Uh, you know, affordable, right? Because I think like even for the Microsoft Azure certifications, they range from like 100 to $150 an exam. Uh, that's enticing, right? Because comparing that to like CISSP or CISM and all the other ones, especially the CEH, which is like a $1,000 plus certification, and it's just a broad certification. It's not really specific to Azure, like Microsoft or Google or anything like that. But does that limit you at the same time? So would you rather have a broad certification or have a very vendor specific certification? And it could go so many different ways. But if you're currently working, and that's the only thing that I can even think of is if you're currently working and you're exposed to that environment, 
then you might as well learn it, right? Because it's there, you can gain access to it. Someone can probably help you and show you the ropes and you kind of could just shadow them and learn so much from them. But if you're still like straight out of school, no experience, and you have no access to any of these applications, and the only thing you have is books and online references for certifications, and you take these courses. Uh, hopefully, you could take a lot of free courses because they get expensive. They really do. And you have so many different platforms that you may not be able to afford all of it, and you don't know which one is good and bad, like which one is actually really nice to sit through and go through like, you know, 30 hours of training only to find out that it wasn't sufficient enough for you to pass the certification or pass the exam that they're trying to help you with, right? I've been through that. I've done that myself. And unfortunately, I can't go back time and say, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I wish I can get back my time that I didn't spend a whole crash course, brain dump, whatever, for five days, uh, 40 weeks, uh, 40 hours in, within that week, you know, sitting through this course that didn't help me pass the exam, right? That's the worst part of it. So getting back to my original point, how do you stand out in this industry where there's so many layoffs, the market is getting saturated with so many people with all these different certifications now, right? Security Plus and CISSP and, you know, OSCP and CISM and CISA. You, the list just keeps on going and going. I remember back, and this is like way back when, it was only Security Plus. It was only CISSP. It was like those two things. And everything else was MCSC, CCNA, like Cisco, Microsoft. There was no Splunk. There was no Google. There was no other certification. And everyone started jumping on this whole certification bandwagon. Like how many more letters do you need after your name in order for you to be qualified for a position? And that's where the challenge is right now. Now, did I answer any of the questions about how to land, whether you're a seasoned professional or someone straight out of school, you and besides luck, right, have to actually showcase that you have a knowledge in all different aspects of cybersecurity. I, what I've been noticing now is that organizations want a well-rounded individual, depending on the specific role that they're trying to hire for. Now, when you're more senior, they want more managerial skills, right? But if you're transitioning into that position and you never had any managerial experience, who's going to give you that opportunity? And I believe that's where the interview has to sell itself, where you have to sell yourself as an individual that is able to acquire this new position and learn from it and also adapt to the culture of the organization to prove to them that you can fulfill this position. Now, that's a lot to do within a few minutes of meeting your hiring manager on an interview, which is insane. I know, I know. But the only way you can do this is by flooding the market with your you know, applications for roles that you qualify for. And hopefully you get those interviews. Use those interviews as a stepping stone to learn how to speak, how to you know, present yourself, how to put everything, everything that you know in a deliverable package where it just like, it like, oh my God, I, I need to buy this. Like if, if I was to speak to you, I would be like, wow, this guy is intriguing. He's ambitious. He has a lot of energy. And that's what I mean. You just have to showcase all that within the matter of minutes of meeting the hiring manager. Now I know some interviews can be really dull. It could be straight to the point. Like they, they ask you a ton of questions and you may not know the answer to everything because maybe you're nervous. Maybe you just got, you know, your cat caught your tongue or you really didn't know how to answer it because you never were exposed to it. That's really challenging as well. So how do you do all that? You got to just know, right? And I say this so easily, but in reality is you have to keep on studying. Not only do you study cybersecurity, like certifications and books and read all these articles, you have to learn how to sell yourself, whether you're learning, watching videos on how to present yourself, watching videos, how to sit through interviews, watching videos on or reading about how to, uh, you know, go through the motions of, you know, being ambitious, being enthusiastic, being happy while you're, you know, talking and smiling and, and, you know, that reflects on the other side of the camera or in person, because it always works like that, right? If you're sad and you're monotone, then the person interviewing you is probably going to reflect off of you and, and give you back the same feedback and probably won't even give you any answers to questions that you may ask. So, but if you open it up, I'm, I'm not telling you to like, you know, ask about their family and the kids and how's grandma doing. No, not none of that. It's more about your, your, will, your willingness to learn and your willingness to actually uh, jump on things and be ambitious and, and excited about the position and you want to be there and you want to learn. And then, of course, it comes down to what they're offering. So I have seen where positions, even as senior, as mid-level, the salary has been coming down a little bit. And unfortunately, that just comes with the times because there is a lot of layoffs and they organizations, I say they, the organizations know this because the market is flooded with individuals looking for the same position that you are. So you have to be reasonable. All right. Um, with that being said, I, I hope this actually helped you out a little bit. If not, comment below. Let me know what it is that you're thinking about, what what you think that is, you know, stopping you or what you try to 
you know, do to make yourself more presentable when you're competing with everyone, whether it's in the comment section below, whether it's with me or someone else or any other interview that you sit through, what are your challenges that you feel that you have? Comment that below so I can address it. Maybe I can talk to you about it and then we can go from there to see how I can actually help you or how this channel, this video can actually help you succeed in finding or landing that first IT cybersecurity job or even your next IT cybersecurity job if you're in currently in one. All right. Thank you guys. And please hit that like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye.